guys, welcome back to Life by the Bow. Just let me tell you something. Pink is one of my favorite colors. Reason being, you get an amazing sunrise here in the Florida Keys, and pink is just one of the colors that is given off. Mm -hmm. And what's so funny is if you would have asked Stephanie about a year ago what a sunrise looks like, she wouldn't know because she doesn't get up early. But <laughs> however, today we've completely changed that. We're up bright and early. She's excited, I'm excited. Got Anthony behind the camera, so I know it's gonna be a good day. But first things first, let's go catch some bait. Let's see what we can put together. All right, guys, we found the baits. And it's always a ridiculously rewarding feeling just because of the fact that we catch our own bait just because if we were to buy these baits, we're talking about 500 bucks. But for those of you that aren't too familiar with fishing, um, we're gonna be using what's called a cast net. And basically, as you can see, I have this over my shoulder. I have it in both of my hands right here. And we're just gonna toss it over the side of the boat in a circular motion. So that's how we're gonna catch all of our baits. But for those of you that are familiar with fishing, this is a 10 foot Betts quarter inch mesh net. Now, the reason why I choose Betts is just because when it comes to quality, it's what I prefer in a cast net. In addition to that, the reason why we're using a quarter inch mesh is just because the smaller baits won't get caught inside of the net, plus it's kind of shallow here, so the net doesn't need to sink very fast. However, if it was deeper, we would probably move up to a 3 8 inch mesh, just so that way the net would sink a little faster. But let's go ahead and toss because they are everywhere. Once we get these baits, let's go fishing. Booyah. <laughs> so Clay just caught the bait. Hey, that was teamwork. It was. I had to clear the wells quite often, actually. And you drove the trolling motor. That's right. So and now that we have the bait, we're going to head offshore and hopefully get on top of some tuna schools and bring them up to the surface and bring them into the boat. Notice how she says, hopefully. It's never promised. You oh, never no. know when you're going out there. So if we catch the tuna today, it's gonna be so exciting because we haven't tuna fished. In a year. Basically about a year. Yeah. So. I'm thinking tuna notches. Well, we made it to our first stop of the day. We're rigging up right now. For those of you that have seen a lot of the other Life by the Bow videos, where we're at is probably one of our favorite places to start our day of fishing offshore, which is the Isla Mirada Hump. And the reason why is just because it's such a great place to start. And if you wanna make a little transition, you know, we're in the Gulf Stream, which is where dolphin travel this time of year. But what we're gonna try first to see if we can catch some tunas we're gonna put out some live baits. We're gonna see if anyone's home. Let's go, Clay. All right, we've Tighten been, the drag. We've been getting sharks, so we gotta try to get this fish up as fast as possible. Tighten the drag just a little. You guys are gonna see me acting real goofy, but that's just because I don't want this fish to get eaten by a shark. Let's go. Oh. Come on, Clay. Hurry. He ain't playing around. Whenever you're really trying to get a fish in quick, guys, you wanna do real short pumps just like this. Come up. Let's down. go. Right there he is. Come on. Come on, Clay. He's These got sharks the other coming. line. I don't That's care. Okay, though. I don't care. We'll figure that out. Ooh. Give me him. Give me him. Give me him. Trying. Okay. Woo! Hey. Got to be aggressive. That's what I'm talking about. First fish of the day. Woo! After feeding sharks, I'll take it. Woo! Thank you. 
So the baits are in the water, guys, and as you saw, we threw out a bunch of what we call freebies. Those are the free baits. And the key is to get these fish feeding, aggressive, so that way they come up and they eat our baits without hesitation. Because if you just throw one pilchard out there, they're a little finicky, they may not eat it. But the fact that we threw all those free ones out, we're creating a feeding frenzy so these fish just come up and eat without any thought. Nice, good job. <laughs> this is where the All right, fun what's started. awesome about this fish, guys, is it is one of the coolest fights. These things swim up to 46 miles per hour. So just think about fighting against a fish that can swim that, those, fast. <laughs> that fast, right? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. He woke up, he saw the boat. He's like, not today. <laughs> nice. Good job, Stephanie. Right way, here. To, way to work oh, around. Oh, there's a shark! Look at how big that thing is, Anthony! Woo! <laughs> Not today, shark! How about Not today. that, baby? Woo -hoo! That thing was massive! Oh, that was! God, you gotta love that. You better hurry up! You better oh, hurry up! Oh, and they're busting. They're busting right behind the boat. Stephanie's Woo! got a nice one on right now. It, I was literally reeling it up! I just got shark, so we're trying to get right on top of this <sighs> fish so that way it doesn't get eaten by another one. All right, so... I'm gonna tighten the drag and just reel. <laughs> oh, I think I see the shark. Oh. Yeah. Go, yeah. go, 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 go. Pull him up. Pull him up. Woo! No shark bait today, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about that? I man? got my two. Woo! Cool. Stephanie's got her limit. So, guys, when you're fishing for these fish, they're act they've actually seen a decline in their population. So, they've limited. Tuna, blackfin tuna, two, two per, per person. person. Or and 10 per boat. Or 10 per boat, depending yeah. how many people you have on the boat. And a lot of people actually don't know that. People don't look at regulations every single time they go out fishing. So it's up to you. Hold yourself accountable to know the regulations every single time before you go out fishing. So Clay right now is getting all of our dive gear ready because we're about to get in the water. It's August, it's hot, and nothing's gonna feel better than jumping in there. And not only are we jumping in, but I'm gonna practice my lobstering skills. Mm -hmm. Something we don't really do a lot of is diving. So we just wanna do more of that and there's some cool stuff to come. Look at that. Another one in the box. Woo! Completely one up me today. Uh, How about it? Oh, yeah. Basically caught all the tuna, caught all the lobster, but hey, I'm perfectly fine with that. I enjoyed filming all of that just as much as I'm sure she enjoyed catching it. But that's oh, yeah. awesome because each of us has a tuna, each of us has a lobster. Check that out, man. It ain't really the prettiest looking thing. <laughs> they can actually be kind of scary looking if you're not really used to them. But we've been catching lobsters our entire life and we're so used to you know, seeing lobsters, holding lobsters. So when you really break it down, you look at all their markings and their colors and these polka dots. I mean, they are really, really a beautiful little animal. And they taste even better, which is awesome.
Ladies and gents, I'm pumped. It's been a little while since we've had some black fins, so I can go for some fresh backyard sushi. I don't know about you guys, but it doesn't get any fresher than that. So yesterday was awesome, but as you guys can see, today we have our catch prepared here in front of us. We just got some salt and pepper on the lobster, got a barbecue rub on the tuna, and then we're just gonna go ahead, throw it on the grill, and we're gonna have Stephanie taste test. I don't know what happened. She caught all the fish this video, basically, and now I'm the one cooking. I don't know what's going on. However, we just hope that you guys like it, but, <laughs> On a serious note, fall is right around the corner, but things are gonna start cooling down. And I think we're gonna start doing a little more grilling. And it's beautiful out right now, it's overcast, we got a nice breeze, so I'm not complaining. So I'm not gonna lie, the tuna did not come out as good or as pretty as I wanted it to look on the grill, but hey, it's cooked and we're still gonna try it. However, the lobster is looking really, really tasty. Like I mentioned, we just have some salt and pepper on here, but what we're gonna add is a little bit of butter, garlic, parsley, and salt, just to add a little bit of taste. And once this gets done cooking, Ready to eat. All right, so right now, Stephanie is going to tell us what she thinks. I've already tried it. However, she's gonna be dipping it in some Dreamland barbecue sauce. So all of our viewers from Alabama, if you know, you know, and I know a lot of you know. But what do you think? Good. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's but. not great i feel like we prepared tuna better but i really like that we tried it out mm -hmm. i don't think we'll go back to this <laughs> <laughs> i'd say that's pretty fair but the lobster what do you think the lobster is delicious like <laughs> it is perfect i feel like this is really yeah this is the best way to prepare spiny lobster for sure i love it so then i did a pretty good job you then. did we appreciate you guys sticking with us throughout this entire video. We had so much fun with this one. It was mm -hmm. great getting back to tuna fishing and of course throwing a little bit of lobstering in it. But we appreciate you guys. 11,000 subscribers in the past 30 days. Insane, so. Awesome day fishing, awesome day lobstering, but we'll see you guys next time. See ya.